I'm Ezra Royzen with Vader TV, the network for innovators. I'm here with uh, Eric King, the CMO, Chief Marketing Officer of Clean Power Finance, a new alternative energy and solar, uh, essentially on-ramping company, helping uh, consumers get themselves into the uh, solar community. Um, right. Well, and, uh, and helping bring down the, uh, the barriers for how people actually begin to consume and use that source of power. So if you could, tell us a little about Clean Power Finance. Yeah, sure. Clean Power Finance uh, has been around um, for about a year now, uh, and basically what we're focused on is bringing solar to the mass market, uh, primarily through um, consumer finance. Uh, so much like an automobile, I mean, if there were no automobile lenders, there wouldn't be not nearly as many cars sold as there are today. And so uh, basically through finance and then also offering the um, solar installer community a software service um, configuration tool. Right now they're doing a lot of their work in Excel mm -hmm. uh, as far as how they configure a solar system for uh, people's homes and price those um, systems. And then uh, the third leg of that stool is um, helping solve some of their marketing issues. And so we have folks like myself on the team who have some lead generation experience and not just uh, not your generic lead generation but more along the lines of you know when we're drawing people in you know, perhaps getting them on the phone, doing a, a, a Google Maps or some other screening where, the, where they're highly qualified. Right? So there's a big sticker shock for solar for most consumers. They, right. they, they get excited about it, and then it turns out it's a thirty, forty thousand dollar $40,000 entry fee. Right. Um, and that's sort of the problem you guys are helping uh, to solve. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to take too much credit for that. Uh, the solar in industry uh, is starting to get better at it, but generally the... The history has been a solar installer would come out to your home and do a fair amount of evaluation and then slap you with a thirty or forty thousand um, dollar quote and then he'd say, "Well, you know, if you've got the money, great, let's get going. And if you don't, call me when you do." And you can imagine what sort of sales process. So the drop off on that's what what it's a pretty high percentage of folks who don't make the trip. Yeah, I mean at least eighty percent. Um, of the folks, you know, end up falling out of that process. And these are people who have gone and generally, they've already taken the step of calling the solar installer themselves. And they're not responding to an ad. They're, they've initiated this transaction. Uh, and so what we're helping do, you know, by providing the financing through point of sale is, it's not a conversation that's a $30,000 conversation. It's a conversation that is $250 a month conversation, or even better, it's a conversation of after tax, you know, the solar is going to cost you a dollar more right. today than your power bill is. And even better, that uh, oftentimes, depending on the, on the loan product, obviously, but you know what your power bill is going to be every month if you do this, whereas if you rely on your utility, good luck. Right. And you, you, it sounds like, from my understanding of the company, is that when people are entering into the service or entering, in, entering into the beginning of sort of implementing a solar solution, right. there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into essentially the evaluation of how that's going to work, the installation, right. and those are other areas you guys have gotten involved in as well. Right. It's not just a financial company, it's a, it's a whole sort of suite of services, almost a solar concierge in a way of getting people yes, to work yes. through the process. Yeah, it is, and, in, and uh, one of the ways that we maintain our focus is, you know, we have a focus on, obviously, on the financing. We were lucky enough um, to find someone that had already was in the midst of finishing development on this software tool, and we've brought him on board. And so that's been a, an enormous leap forward. But you're right. So uh, part of what drives that is not just the technical nature of setting up a solar array to get to become the, be the most efficient, but also so there are state rebates that are in place. They're they're fairly technical, and you know they're looking at you know, the, the percentage of shading on the roof, and then that goes into the calculation and the, the orientation of the roof as to where, you know, it generally needs to be south-facing, it doesn't have to be, and how much roof space is available and how much power you're trying to generate. And So, unfortunately, it's not as simple as a box that you just stick somewhere. Right? And how do you guys... How does your business make money? Is it is it off of the fees and the financial products? Is it through sort of professional services fees? How how does it? There's how do you guys monetize? Yeah, your sure, money? sure. There's really three revenue streams. Um, the one is your is off the loan products, and you know right now we, that's loan you know basically originating a loan and selling it off. Um, s second is on the um, subscription fees. So you know right now. Uh, 
the packages that are available are like a, I think I mentioned, I don't know if I did, but uh, they're Excel based. Uh, and those generally are retailing at, you know, around $100 a seat a month. Uh, and I'm, you know, we're actually going beta on our, t on our software tool, but that'll be uh, a second revenue stream. We haven't necessarily determined the price. And then third will be through lead generation. Lead generation being, um, you know, we're driving leads into our site and through other methods. And then um, the concept is right now, I'm actually drawing this up right now, but where, you know, we get um, a percentage of sale, right? And so that could be, you know, substantial. Uh, and that's that we've run that by the installers and they're, that makes sense to them. And then even better, providing back a rebate to the consumer. That's great. And is your target market California, the U.S., the, the planet? <laughs> uh, well, I think we've ruled Anywhere out the... where the sun shines? Yeah, I think we've for now ruled out the planet. Uh, yeah. It's primarily California. California makes up anywhere from 60 to 70 percent of uh, today's U uh, U.S. solar market. Um, so, you know, being a small company and you're know, trying to stay focused, it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to make a big push outside of California. I mean, we've, uh, we're obviously aware of what's going on. So as far as like our tool goes, it works everywhere. Any thoughts for consumers who are beginning? What should be the things they should be thinking about as they're beginning to uh, get themselves into the solar energy game? Yeah, sure. Uh, I would just say, you know, when you're sitting down and trying to make this decision, you know, there's a couple things. One is look at the overall cost on a monthly basis. So, so if you're paying... You know, $200 a month for power. Remember that power, in, especially in California, has gone up anywhere from 5 to 7% a year. And especially at the higher tiers, is expected to go up more than that. So keep that in mind when you're evaluating the cost. And I'd also say that, uh, you know, look at, at various alternatives. So, I, I mean, obviously, solar is our first spot. But you can look into energy efficiency. You could look even potentially, depending on where you're at, when you're at, at wind, in wind power. Um, it's really... Uh, and this is maybe more my philosophy, but to drive mass market and to get people excited, it doesn't. You can be the greenest person in the world, but you might not be able to afford to be green because you're not a movie star. So, um, when you're looking at this, remember you're, you know, like I mentioned, it's not just about your monthly payment, which is really what matters for most people. But also remember, if you know, if you're putting something into your house, it's creating value. Right. I mean, your house relative to your neighbors, if you don't have a power bill and he does there's something there. So you should always keep that in your calculation. That's great. Well, Eric King from uh, Clean Power Finance, thank you for sitting down with Vader TV. We, uh, we greatly appreciate it. Oh, thank you. And I'm uh, Ezra Royzen of Vader TV, the network for innovators.